What do you say, Lola? Oh, no. Four to you. Oh, look at that. And he's the winner again. <laughs> <laughs> Twice he gave me four cards. I know. <laughs> First time they were all on the floor. Do Rice. your Uno dance. Do the dance. Do your Uno dance. I said Uno. Okay. You Do a dance. dance. I see it, didn't I? Yeah. He <laughs> doesn't know what you're saying. <laughs> so I'm at a local grocery store and I bought little gift baskets and some string. And we're going to be a little creative here to pay for people's gas. The gas station's right there. But we're gonna use this thing. Oh yeah, long enough for sure. <laughs> Bring it over someone's car. Okay, we have little <laughs> gifts. <laughs> and and then we're gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. Over the car, and it's gonna be dangling. And <laughs> Some twenties. On twenty, and I want you to get this string a good five feet, maybe, of string. So fun giving away money. <laughs> okay, now give me the pole. End of the pole. Is she taking it? Is she taking it? Yeah? <laughs> she gave it away? Oh my goodness! Just to inform you what we're doing, we're uh, giving people gift cards for gas. Yeah, you have a Merry Christmas. Okay. <laughs> that was great. No? <laughs> Giving away Christmas presents. Some guy told me to bug off like I was some crook or something. <laughs> it's a Christmas gift. I'm helping pay for people's gas. This is for you, not me. Oh, no. Well, I mean, that's really sweet. This is for you. Oh, thank you. Please accept the gift. <laughs> Have a Merry Christmas. You're welcome. It's for you, dude. Yeah, Merry Christmas, man. Yeah? <laughs> Come here, give me a hug, dude. <laughs> That's sick. Thank you. Have a Merry Christmas, man. I'm not here. It's a gift. Take it! Take the gift! Merry Christmas! <laughs> this lady's gonna talk to us. Thank you guys so much. You guys are such a blessing. Can I ask where you're from? Uh, what here? You're doing this you're just doing it for 25 days of Christmas, I'm doing something sweet for someone every day. That is so cool. And I'm documenting it. Oh, thank you. Sorry, I like looked at you like you were tricking me, but it's such a bad world, you know? I know. God bless you. You too. Bye bye. <laughs> You're welcome. Success. That was fun. We're gonna go to my sister in law's and we're gonna sing happy birthday to my grandma through FaceTime and make dessert. Let's go.
So in high school in uh, my little town and in my uh, in Kirtland, New Mexico, when I was uh, a senior, I was serving as the first assistant to the bishop. We had a group of young men in our ward that were dealing drugs, and they were in my corn. And we had a guy that was in our ward that was the sergeant of the Farmington Police Department. And they had let uh, our good bishop know that they knew what there was going on in these, these boys' lives. And they, they were living down in Bull Moose in this trailer. And so the bishop came to me and, and uh, wanted me to try to help them. And so I reached out to them. I became their friend and, uh, and a confidant. There were many times that they would do their drug deals while I was there. They'd bring their drugs in and their little suitcases and their switch for money. All these guys, several of them, most of them, all had to play, they, they lived there in Curtin. Their parents lived there in Curtin, except for one. They kept trying to sell and do their drugs. So it was on a given night that they were gonna come in and bust them. And, and so I knew what night it was and so I made a purposeful um, to be there that night because I knew one wouldn't have a place to go to. These guys had a, a police monitor in their house because they could hear the policemen when they were coming. The monitors come on and they're coming. Everybody's gathering up their stuff and they're gonna go to this, their houses and get out of there before the police got there. And uh, Ray he had no place to go. And um, so I told him to come with me. Come on, Ray, just come with me, grab your, your stuff. And all he had was his sleeping bag. That's all he owned. And the clothes he had on his back. Along comes Ray to my house. And I remember going in <clears throat> to my uh, dad and say, Dad, I brought Ray home to live with us. And he said to me, okay, okay. But he lives the rules. He lives the rules or he's out of here. My mom was the greatest to him. She treated him like he was his own. And uh, both she and my father spent money to give him a haircut. He had long hair down his back. And, and uh, they helped him with his car, bought him new clothes, made him really feel a part of, of our, our family. It changed our family, changed our family. And some of the Relief Society sisters came to my mom and said, does Jay have any more rays that come, can come stay at my house? It just made a big difference in this kid's life. And he turned his life around. I know he ended up with a job, he ended up with a family, whereas uh, that wasn't the road he was gonna be on. And all that was because of the compassion of my mother. And, great love that she showed Ray.